on public safety, no one is safe until we all are safe. Today, we're going to propose another minute silence to the daily departed Oluwa Bamiche and Yonwole, who was brutally murdered on her way home from work in a state-owned public transportation system, owned and operated by the state, Lagos State. The little disturbing and slightly confusing where to begin to address this issue from. Should we take it from a public safety perspective or from the endemic that has pervaded you know, our state and as a matter of fact, our country, the hydra-headed monster called ritual king? Why are they closely related to you know, these two topics? Because every ritual killing requires a victim, anyways, a victim who many times, you know, in many cases, has been failed by a system where public safety and security is a growing risk and a growing concern. Now, from a public you know, safety perspective, the government simply needs to do more. There are three quick fixes, three quick steps that can be adopted to make immediate impact. One, I think that the public must be fully informed, fully orientated, and even in some cases, be orientated on how to handle emergency situations. Every citizen, as a matter of fact, and as a matter of urgency, should have the emergency toll-free lines stored on their mobile phones. Secondly, emergency response lines should be visibly displayed within a five-mile radius on billboards, on flagpoles, on major highways, where there is an efficient and also an effective 24-hour control room ready to seriously take on these calls and immediately take action. Thirdly, we need to ensure that the control room is well equipped to take these calls and actually take action. We put an engagement plan in place to enhance the efficiency of these control centers. These may sound like obvious suggestions, but you can bet the average legation today does not have this information readily available to them. I mean, how many legations actually have you know, emergency lines on their phone? I mean, today I stumbled on an emergency line that someone posted on my WhatsApp status that didn't know existed before now. Now, there's also the additional orientation that needs to be done to the trust portions that the average citizen has in the agency's response for their public safety, either from you know, the Nigerian police to the CDC, all the, safety, all the security personnel, and security uh, agencies that have been put in place by the government. The truth is, Banishay did not need to lose her life for us to get our act right. The truth is, I am Banishay, so are you. Because I'm sure was someone's child, she was someone's sister. She was somebody's loved one. She should have been someone's wife, someone's mother, and sometime in the future, someone's aunt or grandmother. If only we had done better by her. We did not. We, we, we all must do better going forward because no one is safe until we all are safe. Uh, the issue of security is of great concern. Let me even use this opportunity to say this. Just before this uh, uh, lady's uh, uh, incidents, uh, last week we also had similar, well, not really similar passages, a robbery incidents in, uh, uh, I think, close to University of Benin, where a student was shot. I don't know whether some of you have heard of it. It's online. Uh, personally, I happen to be a graduate of University of Benin, so I, I, I get some people there, so I get updates. Last week, this lady was shot just close to the university. Uh, I think last week Thursday, she was coming back from whether she was going to a hostel off campus and then there was ongoing robbery. The next thing she was shot at, fell on the ground after some uh, uh, persons took over. When the armed robbers left, they took her to the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. She went to coma. She died on Saturday morning after waking up from coma. So this issue of insecurity is, is common. You can Google her. She's Susan Obu. That's her name. So imagine the following week waking up and listening to issue of another lady, another woman uh, uh, being um, attacked in a government-owned metro line or bus system. I'm still, I can't even imagine how, 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 how come? So you no know, way it's actually safe. So I'm just thinking, what can the government do about it? Because insecurity is something serious. If we cannot have true economic stability and progress and peace if we are always threatened every day. So it's something I think we have to sit up and look into, and the government has to take this in serious. I mean, you're, you're right. The government needs to step up because security starts with them, as in not just the police and stuff. It's as in the people that they employed, 
to, uh, to provide the service? What kind of background checks do they, um, do, they do to, um, to vet their drivers, their tic ticket officers? So, because some of these, some of these employees that they, they, uh, they put on, the, on these lines or so are typical area boys on, on the streets. And yes, they're trying to get rid, um, decrease the numbers on the street to put them into employment, but they still have that um, ways of thinking of that Agbero uh, area boys mentality. I'm not saying that then the driver is or anybody is, but we, they need to conduct more checks psychologically, background check to the people they they um, uh, they're driving they're driving the buses because they're dri um, they're driving people to work and back home. What happened if an accident happened? You understand? It's not. Look at what happened that the girl was going home from work. How do we know it's just the drivers or so? So Lagos State has a lot to do to, um, to, to, to counteract this thing, to make it right. Who is driving the bus that we all pay for? We all pay our taxes. Who, who is that person? Where did he come from? Is he fit um, to get that salary, to, to be in that job, to be in that position? So it's not just about the normal security that we think about. It's about security of the employees that basically were for all of us here. We all live in Lagos. We might not use the buses or so, but the, these people work for us. You, I mean, that's my, my thinking. And you? Yeah, I think um, security should be a greater concern to everyone. Just beyond, uh, government has a lot to do. And I think one of the areas where we should start looking into is proper data management system. Just like you rightly said, you can actually not verify who are these drivers, who are these people, you know. You, have, you, you bought bus and then probably who are the ticketers? How do you have to say, uh, I, I move from this place to this place, what's my identity? I'm not even safe. We talked about, he, he was talking about uh, emergency call centers. How responsive are they? When we have, when, when we lot, have to. There's a lot, there's a lot there, there are a lot that we have to look into to ensure that we are secure. Just what are the society itself? What is it presenting to us? You know, we have people who, uh, who celebrate people because you, you drive good cars, because you, you look good, you eat good food and what have you. But what is the source of your 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 wealth. your wealth? We don't know. You can see the issue of uh, a little kid of 19 years in Ogun State, killing their girlfriends. So insecurity is actually everywhere, every sector. So there are a lot of things that are constituted to it. Beyond the government, we also look need to look into parenting. Parenting is very bad these days that parents don't even have time for their children. There is lack of culture, lack of moral, and Cultural all these things. Cultural people think uh, uh, you can just make money anyhow, anyway, and because if you make this money, you just get celebrated. You know, you don't know where you get the money from. So there are a lot of things that actually constitute to the insecurity we see today. We even, can also see even the aspect of education. Said. Yeah, you see education. You see a first class student being given an award of 10,000 naira. <laughs> and we see an, entertain, an entertainer, just like all oh, this big brother Nigeria, good at the ultimate. You see in millions of naira. So look at it like, what, what can I actually do if I need to commit, uh, do some rituals using human body to ensure that I get a, fl a fame and get the money? You know, people are ready to do anything for money. And insecurity will continue increasing if it is not contained and we don't take responsibility. Individual has to take responsibility. Government has to enforce laws and take responsibility to ensure that we have a conducive environment. Yeah, um, I mean, Mr. Tolu, what do you think about, uh, the, you know, we have all mentioned the uh, nice points, but mostly our points are long-term focus, but the short-term focus addressing this issue. Is there a way where they can do like such, such before you had bought this vehicle, this uh, government-owned vehicles, because according to the interview 
I, I watched on, uh, online. I, I noticed the driver of the bus was saying, I think he acted under duress or something. It's like the lady was the last to come down. Some guys were armed in the vehicle or something, and they ordered, they ordered him to drive to a certain point. And they came down with the lady. He couldn't do anything. So I, I, I don't know whether you saw the interview or something of the driver of that particular line. So if there is a way we can do such or something. So what do you think about this? Uh, uh, short term effects. I mean, I, I, saw, short -term strategies. I, I saw the interview of the driver, and to be quite honest, it just it just um, emphasizes what I was saying about I'm not sure due due diligence was done on this individual. You know, uh, clearly he was way above his head in that situation. He obviously, wasn't trained about to handle emergency situations. You know, and if that person wasn't trained, probably wasn't even probably background checks were even done. Yeah. You know, that's that's on one hand. On the other hand, right, short-term fixes. I mean, I already gave three very simple suggestions. You know, everybody should have one, at least one emergency line. Because this lady did a recording on the phone. Imagine, a, imagine if instead of sending that recording to a friend, she actually sent it to a phone number where she knew that, you know, someone would take that, you know, video. And then there'll be an alert that will go to the bus or maybe the next bus stop. Or the next station, and they know that oh, this, this, this is actually an emergency call from this BRT bus. That's basic technology. It's not rocket science. You know, it's putting trackers on buses, putting CCTV cameras on buses. You know, and making sure that buses are connected to to a control room. That's so basic. You know, I don't think it's rocket science. I guess it's, I guess it's impossible for you. Can I, can okay. I also mention that? Um, Insecurity can also be related to uh, poor payment. If poor the payment. person, if uh, if the person you you've engaged to provide a service is not ha if um, if his if his salary cannot j um, j um, take care of uh, of himself or so, he's not going to be thinking of doing his job well. He's going to be thinking of how, how is he going to eat uh, today or feed his family. That if we don't pay our staff well, if we don't pay our employees well. That too can cause insecurity. You understand? It could lead to uh, uh, an inside man. Like let's let's take the driver for it, for instance to basically collude with them, his boys. Ah, come on to my boy, boss. Let's 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 do operation. Let's rob everybody on the boss because he's not being taken. The salary he's working for is not enough to look after himself. That's insecurity as well. Well, you have a point, but I still believe that value is more important than money. So, so just yeah, to uh, up, okay. just just to add to what he did, said. Did, 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 you just say, did you just say value to a hungry man? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let's be realistic. Just just a just to add to, to values. Exactly. Right, let's, sorry, let's not even go there. <laughs> exactly. Just to add to what he has said. You know, when when you look at Nigerian uh, work system, you see that people are actually underpaid in reality. And if we have actually adopted a work shift model where you can actually be paid per hour, per stuff like that. And you, you can actually decide, okay, I'm going to work uh, for this work three hours, just like we have work shift in advanced in developed nations. So you can decide to do work shift for three work shifts and you'll be able to at least earn what you feel you deserve, right? You can see in factory workers, take for example, uh, just to digress a little bit, paid 15,000 Naira for factory work for a whole month. You understand? So we also need to look into work shifts to ensure that these people are paid and they are satisfied. All right, Mr. Tolu, you are. So we have to make sure our country is secured for sustainable economic growth. So uh, just stay with us. Up next is Olari Wajo. <laughs>